So many people in this country do not turn on their heater because of the money. African restaurants charge like 15 pounds for jollof rice and chicken. That I was this person in Nigeria. Whoever you were in Nigeria, please just drop it at the airport. I choke you down just like a Hello, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, you are definitely welcome. This is my first video of the year and I'm so excited. I have a lot to share with you guys. I'm going to be telling you guys about my experience in the UK since I came. What no one tells you about living in the UK, um, what you hear about living in the UK, and maybe I'm going to be debunking some of those things you've been hearing, some of the common things we hear. So if you're interested in that, let's get straight into the video. So I came in September and I've been doing my master's degree. A lot has happened. The experience has been surreal and <laughs> I'm just going to get right into it. So when I came at first, I had some support, people I could ask questions from, how to get information, you know, all of those things I need to know. So I would say it was a little easier because I had also watched a lot of videos before coming. I came, I, I got everything done, everything set, moved into my accommodation, started going for lectures. Then we started having assessment, and that's when I knew what is happening. That's when I asked myself, what is happening? The master's degree is quite different from an undergraduate degree, and I've never had a master's degree, so like, it was like a totally new experience. It's been a totally new experience for me. The way assessment is done here, you don't write exams, so like they give you assignments and you write essays, articles, those kind of things. So they give you like 2,500 words, 3,000 words. The least I have done for an assessment that will be greater than 2,500 words. That has been a hurdle for me because when I'm doing the assessment, of course they will discuss with you how to go about it, how you should do it. But then coming from Nigeria where all I know is writing exams upon exams, you read, write your exam and pass. I'm now like, how am I going to know how they will mark it? How will it be? What if I do not write what the um, lecturer wants to see? Blah, 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 blah. As I'm speaking right now, I still haven't seen any of my grades. I should be expecting one by next week. Fingers crossed. It goes very, very well. So yeah, some of the new things that you might encounter if this is going to be your first time having a master's degree in the UK will be a different type of assessment. Assessment here is completely different. Education here is different. One other thing is um, how we address our lecturers. You call every lecturer by name. There's no Mrs. Miss, Dr. This, Mr. This. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is getting homesick. I wasn't homesick. So I feel like it differs. Some people might end up being homesick while some people might end up getting depressed. But then I'll just give you some points, some hints that I feel like you should try to make use of. Drop every pride you have and be humble. Try to associate with people. I mean, try to be interactive. Try to network. Don't feel like, oh no, I won't talk to this person, or oh, I should talk to this person. You do not know who anybody is, so just treat everyone equally. I think that's like a golden rule in life, generally. Another thing is, it really depends on the city a person is. Like my city, we have a lot of Nigerians, so it was very easy for me to communicate and interact with people and not get lonely. Know that a lot of people in the UK live on credit, and trust me, this isn't a bad thing. Sometimes when you hear it in Nigeria, oh, okay, buy things on credit, it sounds off. But then here in UK, there's something called credit score. So it's even good to buy things on credit because you're building your credit score. And that way, it's easier for you to, like, get mortgage. Because if you are not, if you want to get a house, most likely you would need a mortgage in the UK. Next thing I'm going to talk about is my hustle and struggle of getting an occupation. That was the first time I cried in the UK. Struggle of getting an accommodation. Like, I was like, hey... Because when I came out first, I was like, oh, I want to get this kind of place, I want to have this kind of place. But then when everything started, I'm like, hey, this is reality. <laughs> reality check dawned on me. So like, I was checking like different accommodation um, websites. One of the accommodation websites that I, I really like used, I'm going to talk about it in this video, is Amber Student. Amber Student is a website that even if I came to UK, when I was asking my friends that in UK, they were telling me about it, oh, Amber Student, Amber Student. That was like the website I used to check for this accommodation I presently stay in. And one of the things about it is, you have free cancellation so if you book an accommodation for example now and you're in, you can book from nigeria there is a no visa no pay policy so if you do not have a visa you are not 
required to pay so once you have a visa you know i'm sure that i'm coming to the uk then you pay they give free consultation so like if you register and you like you want to start booking accommodation or just going through accommodation you're confused on what kind of accommodation you need someone to help you so you could get free consultation from your agent most times the agents will even call you themselves like up until now i still get meals from amber students the community uk do not have someone that could pick you up and you're scared to get here and just enter any ride and the whole worry and everything they usually offer transportation services that could help as far as you know the postcode of the accommodation so guys here's the catch they also like give freebies i don't know if you've if you've watched the video i posted on moving to my accommodation if you haven't already you should check the video out there are a lot of packages like sim card resources for students there's so many so many things like now for example the accommodation i presently stay in i have a free gym i do not pay for bills and if you live in the uk you know that this is something to jump on. When I was checking for my accommodation, I ensured to, I ensured to be checking for accommodations that are bills inclusive, guys. That's very important. Bills inclusive. And every accommodation you get on Amber student is bills inclusive because they know that we are students. So it's expected that if you want to be paying for bills, is money. For example, now, my heater is always turned on because, like, I do not like cold for anything. I can't kill myself. I think you're coming from Nigeria and you're not used to cold. Even for your health, you need your heater on. So many people in this country do not turn on their heater because of the money. It's not it's not even like a funny thing to be honest. Because of the money they spend on bills. And I am so particular about the fact that I can turn on my heater as much as I want. So many people who pay for bills do not have the luxury to do that. Here in my accommodation, I can as well not get like data on my phone. Because like if you want to get data on your phone, it's about maybe ten pounds, fifteen pounds. Those are the that's the range it starts from. So here yeah, I have like free Wi-Fi. I'm always watching videos, and, and because reading in the UK involves a lot of research, there is enough internet for that. We also have like study areas and everything. Guys, I'm going to be putting up an accommodation tour very very soon. I'm going to put it on my house tour. So yeah, if you want to book with Amber Students accommodation, check the link in my description. At no cost whatsoever, you can book your accommodation, get free consultation. Guys, I always just want to email, so if you have any questions, please, please ask me. I do not get paid to make this video, it is totally free. But then if you use the link, I get a percentage and that way I feel supported. Any advice you need, just ask me, I'm going to be answering you guys and letting you know all that there is to know. The next thing I'm going to be talking about living in the UK is... Is there racism? I haven't experienced any like form of racism that I can say, oh, you are being racist, it's so clear. But I had an experience and that really like wowed me. I was like, what? What kind of subtle is this? Food here in the UK is cheap. And because they import Nigerian food, it's more expensive. To be honest, African restaurants charge like 15 pounds for jollof rice and chicken. If you want to get like 10 pieces of chicken in the regular UK grocery store, you spend about £1.30, 35, £1.35, that's like Aldi. And not that, like different um, stores in the UK have different ways they charge. Some stores are more affordable, while some are more expensive. But by the time you come, you get to know all of these. You need to like try different ones and know which one fits you best and you know all of that. The next thing I'm going to talk about living in the UK, which is totally different from what we know back in Nigeria, is license, insurance and everything. In Nigeria, if you buy your car, you own your car, you buy your car, you move your car, life is good, Abby. But here in the UK, you pay yearly insurance for owning a car. That you have a car buy, you bought the car with your money, you receive pay insurance that, oh, you're driving on our road, this car must be insured. Don't be say, oh, you have an option. Mm -mm. You must get a car insurance if you want to drive in the UK. It is a standard rule. Also, TV. If, if you buy a TV, I bought TV with my money, I be, put your TV, you must get a TV license. <laughs> So like, I'm not talking about, oh, okay, like, oh, maybe you buy the code that you need monthly subscription. No, license to own a TV. I know, like, that sounds so, like, strange. When I go here and I heard that, I'm like, ah. <laughs> In conclusion, make sure you ask questions. Do not feel shy. Please, you guys, I always say this thing. Always ask people questions. When you come to this country, if you want to get information, you must ask questions. If you want to know what's happening, you must ask questions. And you cannot be asking only the Nigerians that you came with because they are also trying to find their way. That's why you need to integrate. Mix with people who have been here already. Just feel free. Do not feel like, oh, me that I was this person in Nigeria. Whoever you were in Nigeria, please, 
just drop it at the airport if i better still drop it in the house so that it's not follow you to the airport when you're coming here come with a new mind be humble know that you're starting afresh you don't get as you won't be you're starting afresh because you're gonna have to start making pounds and start from the bottom only if you have someone that's sending you huge amount of money in the uk because you know the exchange rate naira and pounds is a lot so earning in pounds and spending the pounds is far much better than having someone who is earning in naira sending you pounds so thank you so much guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it please let me know if you have any questions as usual ask me in the comment section i'll be answering if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and share whatever um Share whatever you think with me about the video in the comment section. Bye for now.